Now, for those of you who have been following the channel for a while now, you will know that it's taken me, I'd say around three to four years to get to where I am now in terms of the production of my YouTube videos, all of this going on behind me and the quality of the videos. And that is what we're gonna be talking about today. Today we are going to be discussing and I'm going to be telling you guys how I film these YouTube tutorials and how I work with the space that I have. Granted, I'm in a very small room at the moment. I don't have a huge studio or anything like that. I pretty much started up doing these tutorials in my lounge, in my living room, using natural daylight. I didn't have any lights, didn't have a microphone. Like I pretty much started making these videos back in 2018 in my living room. Comparing that to what I'm doing now, is pretty mental. And there's a lot of stuff that I wish I knew about back then because my knowledge in video and production and stuff has improved throughout those years of me being in that field, I would say. And I also thought it would be good to give you all a bit of an inside look as to my lighting setup, the audio that I use, and my overall thought process when it comes to making these tutorials, which I pretty much film every single day of my life, or I'm pretty much in this room working every single week, or the videos that you see every week, I believe because I upload every week. And one more thing before we start, I wanna give a huge, huge thank you to the guys over at Nandlight. They have been so, so supportive of me and my channel over the past year. They've helped me out with lighting and all sorts of equipment to bring you guys these videos. So massive, massive thank you to the guys at Nandlight. And if you're after any sort of lighting in this video, I will leave it down in the description. This is pretty much what I look at every single time I film these videos. I've got my light over here, I've got microphone, my camera, little monitor so I can see myself, and my laptop with notes on, which I don't have at the moment because I feel like I can just sort of talk about this topic easily enough without notes. So this is pretty much what I am looking at every single time I film YouTube videos or any tutorial based stuff at this desk right here. Now, the light that I use majority of the time, my big softbox, my key light, as some say, is the Nanlite Forza 60. Now, this is an incredibly, incredibly small, powerful light, and it is perfect for a small space, okay? I could even fit it behind my monitor if I wanted to. I'd probably say the box itself is no bigger than this. It's such a small light, and it is perfect for me to sort of maneuver around my office. I have a bigger light, a Godox, a much bigger light with a C-stand, which had been a quite a pain, I would say, yeah, it was a pain now I think back at it. The benefits of having such a small key light, as you can see, I don't have that much room between my table and the wall, which means I'm able to use a normal light stand from Amazon, which you can pick up for like 12 pounds and it doesn't like tip over. Whereas my other light, I had to use a C stand where it would literally just tip over. So being able to use a soft box, which isn't really heavy, is very, very beneficial for me because literally that light stand takes two minutes to set up. I can put my light on it and I can maneuver it around as and where I want to without bashing the walls or having any sort of issue. This light is also very, very easy to transport around. So if you're on a job or you need to take your softbox somewhere, this is a joy, a joy to transport around because it's not too heavy. It comes in a nice little box, super compact, and I just love it so much. It's insane how small it is. When I got it out of the box, I was like, nah, surely it can't be that, that good if it's this small. And like I said, it is perfect. I love it. I love it for this small space. Of course, when I upgrade my studio or if I go somewhere bigger, I will have the opportunity to use bigger soft boxes but for this area and for this little space I have now it is a joy. Now in terms of backlighting I have this which I've spoken about countless times in videos this is the Nanlite Pavo Tube 6C which I use now to light this part of my face give it a bit of like three-dimensional look and I also have another one sitting behind my monitor giving off that nice white glow which you can change to loads of different colors I've spoken about this product in one of my gift guides I believe back in December if you guys want to go and check that out I'll put it up here and then this right here is the Nanlite 15C so that is like the bigger version of this one on my left and then behind me on the shelf is a mini aperture ALM9 I believe have I got that right yes I have so it's these little things I have about three of them and I use them just to light shelves or the behind of things whenever I'm filming anywhere they're just really really good to plot behind a plant pot or any ornament in your room if you want to give it a nice bit of a 
backlighting, and then I have my little on-air neon sign. And that is pretty much it for my, my lighting. Now, lighting for me when I first started out was very alien. I didn't really understand that much about it, but watching a lot of behind the scenes videos and other people who are really good at lighting over on YouTube, and I believe investing in lighting is probably the most important thing when it comes to making videos because like I said, you can come off really, really professional if you've got professional lights. And I honestly do think that lighting is probably the most important thing when it comes to giving off that really professional look if you're going for that in your, your videos. So that right there is my lighting setup. Those are the lights that I use every single day. And I do quite a lot of the time like to change up my background as you've seen. I don't really like sticking to the same background all the time if I can change it I will so I just kind of move these lights around now let's talk about audio this this little robot in front of me <laughs> Now the microphone that I use currently is the Rode NTG4 Plus. I used to use my Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, which I use for vlogging or when I'm out and about, but I decided to invest in a shotgun mic, a proper shotgun mic. I heard a lot of good reviews about this one and this is currently sitting on a 12 pound Amazon boom arm. If I bring it down, you guys can see it's a pretty long mic, but I literally put it just out of frame. I don't know if any of you who've been watching the channel for a while have noticed a change in the audio because I've only had this for five or four months now just before Christmas and it's literally just hooked up to my camera I'm not using any uh, XLR inputs or anything like that I've just got it plugged into my a7 III through the jack lead and then it just records the audio straight into my camera so really really simple when it comes to editing the benefits of using a shotgun mic or a boom mic is that it's going to give me a lot crisper audio than it will if I was using a video mic pro or a lav mic or anything like that because it's just long it's just too much hassle to set up a lav mic every time I want to record and yeah that is my audio side of the uh, setup, I guess. Now it's time for the big daddy, my camera. Now the camera that I use to record all of my tutorials, all of my vlogs, pretty much all of my YouTube content is my Sony a7 III. This camera is a beast and I currently have that mounted onto a KNF concept tripod and then attached to that I have a Shinobi Atmos monitor so I can see myself. So if I hold this up right now, you guys can see what I'm looking at. So this little monitor, I literally just plop down right underneath my camera and I can see myself nice and clear. I can see the whole background and then and obviously because it's mounted on the tripod and the tripod is not moving if I want to take it off and put it back on I don't have to reset everything up and fiddle around with stuff like that so I can just take it off put it back on and this angle stays exactly the same mounted onto my a7 III I use the Sigma 14 to 24 mil f 2.8 this lens is a beast it's an absolute beast i had sigma loan it to me a few months back and i fell in love with it so i had to buy it i absolutely loved it i decided to get it over the 16 to 35 mil simply because i love the look that the 14 mil gives off plus if you see if i zoom all the way out to 14 look how much background i've got it literally takes up the entire office but usually i record at about 15 mil maybe 16 mil about here and then if i need to crop in in post i will do so so that is my setup that is pretty much what I have recording and what I'm looking at every single day of my life when I'm filming and I have that plugged into an extension lead so my camera is constantly on charge when I'm recording so I don't have to take out batteries and stuff like that. So it's always good to have a constant power source going into your camera whenever you're recording things because it can just be a nightmare if you need to change batteries and stuff like that mid recording and then you need to set up the camera again and then the angle changes, it's just a nightmare. So just make sure you've got constant power going into your camera and that is the uh, the tech side of things covered. And I think that is it. Talked about my camera, talked about microphone, lighting. I think that's everything. Oh, my desk, this, this thing. This right here is actually the side piece of a wardrobe, which I bought from Homebase for like 20 quid. Uh, and then I got them to cut it and I just slapped it on top of my smaller desk to make it look like I've now got uh, a big table. And I like the walnut look to it and it cost me 22 quid. 
that is literally it. Super, super deceiving when you actually see it on camera because it looks like I've got a big wooden table. So that is it for me. I hope you guys did like this video. I hope it was informative and I hope it gave you all a bit of an insight as to what goes on behind the scenes when I record these videos, which I bring to you every week, or I try to every week. The blood, sweat and tears that goes into making these videos. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, rate and subscribe if you are new and I will see you all very, very soon in the next one. I'm actually heading off to Scotland in two days. Anyone who watches these videos from Scotland, shoot me a DM. Don't forget, take care, peace.